Do you love your hair or is it still a challenge? Today we're talking about how dressing your truth can make every day a great hair day. So can you all say you love your hair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love my hair. So this is our type one expert, Jalea, our type two expert, Anne, our type three expert, Sarah, and our type four expert, Callista. Hair's an interesting experience, very emotional. It can be a really great experience or it can really create a downer every day Mm because you're interacting with your hair on a daily basis. So you have a relationship with your hair and you have made a decision along the hair journey of where you are with your hair as far as I love it all the way down. It's never what I want. I can't get what I want. I'm always frustrated. I don't like my hair. And that settles in and becomes your habit, your practice, which then you recycle and keep creating over and over and over. And so dressing your truth gives you the insight you need to know how to influence a stylist experience with your hair to say, I know what I want. I know what the end outcome I want it to be. And they're there to help you achieve that then Mm -hmm. rather than you feeling at the throes of their mercy to go, I hope this works out for me. And you can be the expert of your hair then. And each of you have acquired that status where Mm -hmm. you are an expert of your own hair and you feel it is a part of your whole look. So it's never just about your hair anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about, I like the way I look. My hair is contributing to that positivity I'm having about my appearance. What's your hair journey look like through your Dressing Your Truth experience? Well, when I first started Dressing Your Truth, I had really long hair, and I'd always had that up I bet you got a lot of, and you probably had a ton of compliments about it, Oh, yeah. It, right? I mean, it was gorgeous hair. Just long, thick, yeah. voluminous. Like, it was lovely <laughs> hair, right? So, and I say about that, well, the hair's getting all the attention. Right, and it, and that's what you told me. You're like, yeah, your hair's lovely, but it's the one that gets all the attention. Yeah. And I was like, oh. I you was like, play so, with it, though. You would do lots of different it? tricks I could do lots. And... Yeah, because it's long. You can, like, really yeah. play with it. So I was like, all right, well, let's just go for it. Let's just cut it off. And we had a stylist that wasn't, like, super experienced at the time, and she totally, like, fried my hair. So not only was it, like, really short, but it was, like, fried and it had to like grow out to be like lovely. So like so my pump? first cut experience, I was like, this is the worst thing in the world. I hate it. But look at you just being like, let's do it and jumping <laughs> into it. Right. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, very and then even way. even when it was hard and kind of yucky, I was like, well, at least it'll grow back. You know, yeah. I haven't never been super attached to my hair. Yeah. And so it did grow back and then I cut it even really shorter and that was fun for a period, but I don't think I'll ever go back and do it again. Um, but this, the haircut that has always been kind of my go-to now is my medium lob haircut. And right now I'm in a period where I'm like, I'm growing it out. This is fun. And how that's... Let's see how long it is now. So it's quite a bit past my shoulders. So it goes anywhere from here to there. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And just... Which I recommend for a type one Mm -hmm. to not let it drop below your bust line Mm -hmm. because now we're going downward. Yeah. And just as I'm sitting here, I'm kind of like, I think I might cut it to that lob again. (laughs) So (laughs) so we'll see. Just the long bob. Yeah. And have I achieved the hair that I love the most? Every time now that I cut it play with it, highlight it, make it pink. It's all just fun and random and different. So I'll always have hair I love because it'll be fun and random and different. I don't have to have one specific haircut that I Mm -hmm. always need to have. You have enough hair that you can do different styling effects with it Mm -hmm. like you've done today, like this is it. Yeah, you know? like I can I don't braid have it, options. I can twist it. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can go up, up or down. down. <laughs> I can curl it. I can straighten it. I have lots yeah. of options. So. Great. What yeah, are you? With me, my hair has always been curly. I, my sister had naturally curly hair and I kind of followed in her lead and so I've always worn my hair naturally curly and I've always had it about this length. There are a couple times in my life where I have cut it really short but that's not my preferred style. So I usually will keep it here anywhere between below the bust or just right above and lots of layers. The biggest thing that has changed for me over the years has been my color. Mm -hmm. You can see in my pre-DYT picture it has a lot of bright gold so I played in more the warms. I would even put in big chunky reds and purple, so I was definitely leaning more into Mm -hmm. the type three with my color. And then over the years, we've played with different, you know, widths of highlights or different values. I've had darker hair. I've had more blonde hair. Even purple at times. Yeah, I've had (laughs) highlights of purple. And so now it's, um, I've always, my goal has been to get to just more of a natural color in the last year. And so letting my brown be the 
my natural brown rather than coloring that and then just adding in the highlights. I do prefer having some lightness around my face rather than just having all one solid color. I feel like mm -hmm. that brings in some dimension and lets my curls yeah. kind of shine more fully. Mm -hmm. And so that's been the biggest thing for me is um, understanding through Dressing Your Truth that a type 2 needs to have those cool based colors and keeping on top of that because our hair naturally wants to go warm because of the sunlight and products that we put in it and just natural wear and tear. And so I, and Nicole teaches this, what we need to do is type two to remedy that and to stay mm -hmm. in the cool colors. And so over the years, my cut and style has stayed pretty much the same. It's my color that has varied and then just always working to keep it that cool mm -hmm. quality because that looks mm -hmm. so much better on us as type twos. I want to give you more credit than you're giving yourself. The other thing you've mastered is the curly hair. Yes. That was a big part of your feeling successful with your hair, and you've outlined that in very specific steps in that module in our hair content in the free Dressing Your Truth course. Anne teaches her detailed steps that are easy to use and the products to use to have a really positive curly hair experience it's to really make so, the most of your curl. It's always so rewarding when I hear a woman say that she's watched that, she's put it to use, and whoa, I didn't know I had this much curl, so have you gone through the perfect curly hair? tutorial that we have in the Dressing Your Truth course and put it to the test because more women have curly hair than they realize. Even wave, like you have a nice wave have to your hair. Have you ever tried If I do, I'm saying that it is, it, it is lovely curly hair. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. I'm always like, it's just so happy that people are playing with that. Even if it's not like your preferred, I'm now going to go curly 100%. Mm -hmm. Although some women do and they're like, this is so much easier. It's something to play with and have fun mm -hmm. with. So. Mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate for bringing out the curls. That's awesome. <laughs> and my girls, my twin girls have curly hair. And I just always am looking at you thinking, oh, I hope they grow up to have beautiful hair like Anne. Oh, their hair, their hair is curly as can be. Yeah, it's so, cute. It's so fun. Well, my DYT journey with my hair has kind of been dramatic. True to type three, <laughs> nature just kind <laughs> of found... Um, yeah. So before Dressing Your Truth, I had just a blonde flat bob, very circular. And um, Dressing Your Truth has taught me that I need more angles in my hair. Well, initially, I kind of went to the extreme. It's like, oh, I had no angles? Okay, let's go for a lot of angles. And so, so I went... went just two type. It was just type three. It was just really short and, and edgy and um, not my preferred style. At the time, I liked trying it, though. I mean, I wanted to try different things. And so I went from that, and then I kind of grew grew out most of the layers, but then kept like a, a blunt bang that was edgy, and then did lots of texture in my color. And then from that, I I decided to grow it out. I mean, I, I oh I went really platinum and edgy, and then I grew it out. So I've I've done kind of all sorts of things with it. But what's been fun is that they're all type three, and so it's fun to see that I can mm -hmm. do lots of different things. You and have a lookbook for all of yeah, our types of I know. women, just well, like what you've done with and your hair. And it's funny, too, because, like, sometimes I'll look at it and be like, whoa, it doesn't even look like me, you know, because some of them are so different, but they mm -hmm. all are perfect type three mm -hmm. kind of classic mm -hmm. styles. So well, within time, as you explore this space, you find your range as yeah. you work with this information. The best first step is to go through the hair module in the Dressing mm -hmm. Your Truth course because you're going to learn keywords that you want to express in your, the movement of your hair. Big hair gallery in there yeah. is super valuable for you to get visual references and then a whole content piece that teaches you about what you're wanting to do, a color, cut, and style. Because those are the three factors that influence what the outcome is. The color, the cut, and then how mm -hmm. you style it. And you need, most women need styling uh, advice. Yeah. And tools. Sure. And that's where our lifestyle content is so yeah. valuable because yeah. Nicole, does it, our dressing and treat stylist, gives a lot of additional yeah. support in how to style. Yeah, yeah I've gained so many techniques. Just knowing the right way to use a tool and the correct way to use a product. Because, I mean, you go to any store and there are just a sea of products out there. And where do you even start? And that's why we've created this Dressing Your Truth hairline. So we've narrowed down those key products that are necessary for either all types would benefit from that product or some are specific for each type to create that look and that style. And Nicole goes through each and every single one of those products and she teaches us how to have the best mm -hmm. experience with products and mm -hmm. tools. You know, with how to use a flat iron, how to use a blow dryer, how What's to your use... favorite Dressing Your Truth product? I love, right now, well, it vacillates, but right now I'm loving hair repair. I use that pretty much every single day, and I use it with my hair when it's wet and when it's dry. It just oh, creates really? that polish. And that's I want to hear more about your quality. hair story, though. So my hair, I've never changed my color. I kind of hit this. This is natural, right? This is my natural color, and it's so perfect for me. 
I am starting to get some gray on the side, so eventually I'll have to be helping that out. But for right now, I've got a nice saturated. It's a dark, cool, deep, dark brown, and it's perfect for me. It's very type four, and so I've not ever played with my color because I like it. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> and But my style has changed, and as I've done Dressing Your Truth, it's morphed and it's just progressively got a little bit shorter like Julia I used to have super long hair when I got married my hair was past my bum it was super duper long and like Julia my hair got so many compliments all the time that I kind of took on the identity of my hair it's like oh it's my real thing. Thing. yeah it's a real yeah. thing Take no it. yeah it's like you <laughs> need it, it is. how can you let go my of hair was who I was it yeah, was it's like you know people you know you have long hair yes I do thank you you know like <laughs> it's my hair and it was beautiful and I could curl it and I could braid it and I could do fancy updos and it was just really like princess mermaid hair uh and then I started realizing you know what? I would like to start getting compliments and I needed to clean it up and I started seeing myself through a different lens um, and through the lens of wanting to be seen for who I was as a person and not for what my hair was. Uh, and so it started, at first, the first cut, I brought it up to about here and I started doing it just to get a nice blunt clean line and I really liked that and it was pretty and I liked that a lot. Um, my hair is naturally curly like Anne's, not quite as curly as Anne's, but it's pretty curly and different, you know, hormones change the curl of your hair. So when um, I've had each of my children, my hair has gone through kind of like a curly phase and then a straighter phase. So I'll embrace the curly phase and do it curly for a while and then I'll go back to straight for a while. Um, but all the time, I, I wasn't really loving the experience I was getting with my hair. I liked it and I felt pretty, um, but I didn't really love it. And then last year, I just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna make something. I wanna change the experience I'm having with my hair and create an even better experience. I was having a good experience, but I wanna have a really great experience. So I went ahead and cut it up to this length. And that I was love it. about six, eight wow. inches or so it that I cut off so last beautiful. year. And at first I did kind of an A-line with it and I really liked that and that was fun. Um, and then this last year or so, I brought it more just even in the back, but I really like the way it looks. And I thought, you know what? I straighten my hair all the time. Can I save myself some time? So just last month, I actually had it chemically straightened. Oh, you did? Uh-huh, I did. And it saves me boatloads of time. I just think of it as it's akin to like coloring your hair, you know, like yeah, you, or you have gray curl. hair, you don't like it. So you're going to add um, color to bring out the texture. Well, I decided that yeah. the sleekness looked better on me and I can do curls and I still curl my hair, but my natural curl was just a little too frizzy and didn't have enough structure mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. So I brought it more sleek and just keeping it straight makes me a lot happier. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And I well, love that my is, hair. Gorgeous. You know, I just look better with less. Yeah. Yeah. Less, less, less is less more. Has been less your is thing, more. Right? <laughs> the only way I could go is like bald at this point. No, uh, I've always been close. I've always somehow known I look better with short hair. Even before dressing your truth. Right. Well, like the cover of Remembering Wholeness is pre DYT, and I have a hairstyle that works mm -hmm. for the time period because mm -hmm. time period, what's going on culturally, what mm -hmm. trends are, do influence yeah. our hair choices, and. Just recently decided I was going to shave the back side, and I really like it's it. It's awesome. You don't notice it as much when you just get a front view. It looks pretty similar to what I had before. It's more this profile side mm -hmm. that you really see how sleek and more severe it is. But I like it. I have a nice shaped head. And mm -hmm. you how do. long does it take you to me. do your hair? Oh, Ten minutes at yeah. most. I, I very, believe very like, minimal. when you're in the right spot with your hair, it shouldn't take you more than ten minutes to yeah. do your hair mm -hmm. on an average yeah. Daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do still color my gray, and I'm fine with that. You know, I don't know at what point I might choose differently, but it will present itself. I'll go there if it feels right. It just feels correct to keep doing this. So I really like my. I think back, I laugh because some of you know we thought we we'd hit that sweet spot. We're mm -hmm. like, yes, this is so great. And you look back now and go, hmm, what was yeah. I thinking? Yeah. Not quite. You know that sweet spot I thought it was. So I wonder well, where, you know, what's what gonna, think about this? Yeah, five <laughs> years from now, where will I be? And yeah. look back at this yeah. and go, what was I, mean, I thinking? I that's the beauty of dressing your truth yeah. is, you know, you can, like you said, we're all our own hair experts and we keep yeah. refining and getting better mm -hmm. and moving with what works for us and where yeah. we're at. Yeah. Well, we, we uh, I think his clothing is such a big part of our appearance experience and how we feel about our bodies that it's very common that women that go through our free dressing your truth course really get all the content, uh, really study the content on clothing and, and accessories. And you want to keep going and make sure you know the information for your type's mm -hmm. hair so you can have a very positive experience. Because we'll see women 
dressed. It's kind of like from the neck down, you know, it's all working. But and their the hair's still... hair's not <laughs> yeah. really pulled into that. It's like, you yeah, haven't done the hair part yet. You're so close. You're and so what do we look at? We see a woman's face first. Mm -hmm. You want to draw your attention yeah. to a woman's, you know, we see women's eyes come forward and their smiles brighten and age, you know, years taken off their complexion. You really do. And you your have hair the, frames mm -hmm. your face. Yeah. yeah. You have the correct movement around your face. So make that a priority and go through the hair content if you've not already or review it and kind of check yourself if you can say I'm really loving my hair, then you're in a really good place and keep learning. If you're not, you can get there. Just stop the negative points of reference. Mm -hmm. I hate, you know, you're gonna keep, you're gonna create what you believe, what you're stating, what you express. So make a decision. I'm having a great experience with my hair and that will start to happen for you. Now, what's your favorite hair product? Hair play, this one. Well, I don't wash my hair a ton, and so it's so nice to just have a fresh hair every day. It's mm -hmm. like a dry shampoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love the foaming silk volumizer. It's a little mousse. Just get it right in your crown, and it helps just bring those roots yeah. up. I use both of those and love that, but I use more than anything the finishing spritz. This I go through this stuff like nothing. <laughs> magic water. It's magic. I love it. My hair <laughs> looks amazing when so I So that's use your it. styling product. You don't have to use other... Styling I, products? Or? I do. I'll occasionally use like the texture taffy, but 90% of it is that. Yeah. My other products I use is when I, it's wet. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. Mine's root boost because I really love the support in giving my hair some height. So, how are you feeling about your hair? Can you say you love it? Are you creating the experience you want with it? Yes, you can. Make sure you go through the free content in the Dressing Your Truth course. So you can create a positive experience with your hair so you're seen for who you are in the world. Share in a comment what you've gained from this chat today and what insights you've had about your hair.